we're going to be continuing our totem poles by creating the shapes for our animals today. And the reason I use the word shapes is because the Haida would create geometric shapes on all of their animals. I'm gonna be starting with my bear today. That's why I have the brown. This can actually just stay in your folder, but I wanted to show you what animal I was working on. At your table, you have some resources today um, to look through just in case you don't quite know what the shape of the animal looks like. And if you know some of them from your head, that's fine. Um, if not, you can use this to kind of look through. I also have some insect packets, so you can use these as a good resource today to look through. At your table as well, you have a variety of different buckets and lids and different things that you can trace for your geometric shapes. And then you'll have additional construction paper as well so that you can trace right on those. You can see that there's different shades of brown, so in order to create my bare parts today, what I don't want to do is pick the same exact shade of brown. It will blend in too much, but I can use the different, the lighter and the darker um, to create my animal parts. I'm going to start with this really dark brown to create the bear's body, and I'm going to try to use as much of that paper as I can, so I don't want to like center this right in the middle. I'm going to kind of come down into the corner, and I only have just a little sliver of paper left on either side. Using a pencil and just holding that down, I'm gonna simply trace. I'm gonna switch to a smaller bowl and the light brown paper, and this is gonna be what I use for his paws. And since he has four paws, I'm gonna trace it four times. And trying to conserve as much paper as possible by keeping my shapes really close together. Using the top half of my dark brown paper, I'm gonna use this for the bear's head. And I'm gonna trace upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Again, trying to go to the corner as much as possible. This time, instead of tracing the full bowl, I actually wanna have a semicircle for the bottom of mine, almost like a moon shape. And so I only traced half of the bowl and then freehanded the rest. So that's also an option when you are creating today. And the last thing my bear will need are some ears and I have just enough space left up here in my dark brown paper to do that. I only traced one circle for the ears because when I cut it, I can just cut it right in half and then I'll have two ears instead. So I have the body, the head, the ears, and the four arms and I conserved as much paper as I possibly could. The next step on the back side of your papers is to put your name as large as you can. So that way when we're cutting out the different shapes um, and we have to put these in our table folders, we can at least find a portion of your name to know whose it is for the next class period. Nice and big right in the center. And now the next step is to cut out these shapes. Remember when we use our scissors, we open wide like an alligator's mouth and just cut right along your pencil line. When you are done cutting out all of your parts, Little scraps like this can be torn off of the bigger paper, but that's still a nice big piece of paper, even if it has pencil lines or anything on it. That's a nice big piece of paper that another artist could use to cut out arms or maybe a little nose. So I'm gonna have a scrap bin over by the construction paper, and if you have a large piece like this, tear off the little small pieces first, and then just put it over there in the container. If you have any small pieces though, those all need to be wadded up as tight as you can and throw them into your table trash can. If you end up having any leftover pencil lines on any of your animal shapes, you can erase those. And right now that's what my bear looks like, just cut out of geometric shapes. The next thing we're going to be using are the glue sticks. When you pull the lids off, put those towards the middle of your table so they don't end up rolling all over the floor. Remember when you're using the glue sticks, it's okay to give it one twist up so that you have a little bit of glue to work with. And it doesn't really matter where you start. I'm gonna start with the head. I'm gonna be giving you a piece of scrap paper to work on top of because when you glue, you're gonna have to glue right towards the edge of a shape. 
And that way, all of that little sticky glue stays on the paper and not all over the table. Your name should be the back side, so I can see part of my name on there. This is the front side of the belly. And I'm just gonna simply overlap that just enough so that it looks like a head with the body. Remember, when you use a glue stick, you give it a back massage. So right along that edge, I'm just taking my thumb and making sure it's nice and secure just like that. And if you accidentally get a little glue on your animal, it's okay because it will dry clear. If you don't get enough glue on an area, just take a peek, put a little bit more glue, and rub it down. And that's what the bear looks like after I have glued it using glue stick. Now that I'm all finished with it, we do not need to untwist them. That's what breaks the glue sticks. So instead, just snap that cap and give it a nap.